was 22 and fresh out of university, I was terrified to make the wrong choice. I envisaged this life deprived of all joy and maybe stuck in a job that I hated. And then I was 41. And when I was 41, I was terrified because I just made the switch to being a commercial airline pilot. And at that age, there are definitely no jobs. But the reality is that I did find a pilot job. And I didn't stop there, but I continued to evolve as a person and in my career, now spending some significant time in teaching others about this journey. Now at age 48, the fear has mellowed. I've discovered it's never too early nor too late to pivot. And there are actionable, proven steps to navigate these shifts at any age. Together, let's dive into the evolution of career shifts, explore the steps you can embark on no matter where you are in your journey, and confront the fears and challenges that stand in our way. To understand how you can master a career shift, you need knowledge about three areas. How career shifts change from our early days to maybe late into our journey. What practical steps I took to make the changes I wanted and how you can too. And what fears and challenges you may be facing and how we dispel them. Even if you are just starting out, you may benefit from looking at how our career goals change over time. One of the great things of being young is that you can explore and experiment. And there are very few external expectations. And if you fail early on, who would blame you? But exactly this attitude to risk is also something that will help you later on in life. Maybe at that stage you have more obligations, yes but you also have more experience to deal with them. Want to turn it around? Well, it's true that those pivoting later on in life have often some different expectations, such as leaving a legacy or perhaps prioritizing passion over profit. These are exactly the pivots that make someone at that stage often far more successful than before. So if you think a little about those aspects when you are young, you are left with a huge advantage. The essence of any career decision, pivot or switch, is clear though. We have to align our ambition to our desire. And there are only two things that stand between us and success. One is not knowing how, and the other one is fear. Let's talk about the how first. Most career changes don't start with someone saying, oh, hey, now I want to be an architect. Maybe there are a few who have this childhood dream of something and now is exactly the right time. But for most of us, it starts differently, often with a nagging feeling. There must be more to life than this. Or I don't feel very excited about my future. Or I had this huge promotion, but I still feel flat. Or we ask ourselves, if life stopped now, what have I really achieved? And very often, maybe it's too late. So what most of us have to do is translate those feelings into something we can actually do something about. Step one, get clarity. Do some personality tests and assessments. Talk to a career strategist or a friend. Ask what you spend most time thinking about, except when that is chocolate, that would be... Sometimes afraid that someday, somewhere I might lose all I have And all I'll do is stand out front I have a whole membership section on my webpage that is dedicated to the tools that I found most useful. It usually comes at a small annual cost, but in celebration of this video, there is a link down in the description below that gives you free access for a full month and without any obligation. And of course, you will have all the links and more right at your fingertips. Step two, personal branding. Most people suggest that this comes as a last step in the process, but I disagree. You want to know what story to tell before you set out. The reason? Well, usually the main person you will tell the story to is yourself. 
When I left finance, I still spent years ruminating about all the perks and the joyful times I had in that career, even when it was clear to me that I wouldn't want to go back to it right now. And this happened because within myself I made a change, but I didn't make sense of everything to myself fully. So write down your story, practically draw up how your new LinkedIn profile will look like. What are the people that you are surrounding yourself with? And what are the new achievements that you will be proud of? Step three, connect the dots. You now have three very valuable pieces of information. You know what you are already good at in your current job. You know what may suit you for the future and your specific personality. And you have a story in mind that you want to tell. Now is the time to think about transferable skills. At this stage, it's not even essential that this elusive job or career is realistic. All you need right now is a list of skills and ideas that you want to incorporate into your future life. Step four, brainstorm. Connect your list of skills and ideas to what is already out there. Google, ChatGPT and a career strategist might be your best friends, but don't stop there. The most successful pivots, especially the ones later in life when you've already accumulated a good amount of experience and knowledge, are the ones that create something new. And new can be an innovation or it can be a change in something that already exists. Step five, argue. Find all possible arguments against your choice. Trust me, even if you are completely convinced of something, all of those thoughts and arguments will come back into your mind at some stage. My good friend cautioned me, for example, to leave finance for flying because it's a financial step back. And I just laughed it off because this didn't really matter to me. But there were certainly times when I felt, geez, I wish I had that February bonus from my bank right now. Your future life will feel infinitely better when you already had all those arguments in your head or in your notebook. Before we touch on those, if you get value out of this video, please do give me a like. It's free and it gives me a little feedback on how the content resonates with you. Maslow's Pyramid of Needs really points out what we need in life. And each level compares to some deep fears we have when pivoting. Number one, physiological needs. That's the fear of not being able to provide basic necessities for oneself or one's family and that is mostly related to financial worries. There are two parts to this. Number one, you obviously have to fulfill your obligations. That goes without saying, but there is a second part. Number two, a career change also comes with a lifestyle change, for the better or worse. So make sure you are comfortable with some adjustments you have to make. I traded a nice car and house for a rented flat and a much cheaper vehicle. And that was okay. Some of it may be temporary, some of it could be permanent, but it also depends on how flexible you are because later on I traded that rented flat for a nice house again, just in a country that is much cheaper than my beloved London. Number two, safety needs. The fear of losing financial security and stability. Our need for safety goes beyond the purely financial. Starting over or pivoting can mean that you trade your established career for something where you are junior to those significantly younger than yourself. And at first, you also have a lot less security as you are building up a new set of skills. This goes back to step five of our plan. Argue well with yourself and then never look back. Number three, love and belonging. The fear of being judged or rejected by peers or society for changing career paths. We live in a world that is shaped by societal norms and evolution has centered us around having to fit in. Mentally, we may overcome this easily as more and more of us are aiming for unconventional career paths. But emotionally, we may very well be drawn to convention. The best way to overcome this fear is to find your little tribe of people. The people who think like you. For me, this is where YouTube comes in because I connect to my viewers on that level, which makes me feel good, even when sometimes faced with those around me who just shake their
their head at my journey. And then there is also a small group of fellow creators that I have who remind me of the journey we are in together. Number four, esteem needs. And this is where sometimes ageism comes in. Now, remember when I said I became a commercial airline pilot at 41? Well, the reason I was hired with the normal entry pilot being 20 or 25 years old was my broader experience in life and the ability to communicate well. It was something that really mattered to an airline that specializes in VIP travel. Find your vantage point and make your age work for you. And number five, self-actualization. The fear of never reaching one's full potential due to staying in an unfulfilling career or not pursuing one's true passions. Many of us dismiss those nagging feelings that there is more to life. And we do that because of a fear of failure. All I can say is this. I very rarely failed early on in my career and everything ran smoothly. And when I started to be more unconventional, I failed a lot more. And that was sometimes frustrating, but when I look back, I look at the alternative, being in a good job with good money and little worries, but without a true challenge and without an ability to grow. Remember, you are born to grow, not until you are 25. You are born to grow forever. Remember, it's never too late or too early to pivot towards your passions and potential. Whether you are taking the first steps or you want to seek a meaningful change later in life, the path is yours to forge. Let's embrace the journey, support each other and step into our next chapter with confidence. Thank you for being here, for sharing this journey with me. And if you found value in our time together, then subscribe for more adventures in growth. Until next time, keep dreaming, keep striving and never stop growing. Take care.